Red 5, standing by. What's going on, everybody? Good Wednesday evening to you. It is good to see you, and it is good to be seen by you, and I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful one. I, of course, am Bill Soley, a.k.a. the Dungeon Delver, and we're going to be joined by my co-host, Kyle Schuant, here in just a few minutes, but I hope you're having an absolutely positively wonderful Wednesday. We've got some fun in store for you guys. Uh, we're going to be showing you guys how Kyle is going to be doing the hex crawl that we are going to be kicking off here. Um, now, as I understand it, uh, also, I'm going to be genning up a character tonight for his game. As I understand it, uh, Kyle is going to be out for a couple of weeks. They have a mini school break down under, and then we're going to be kicking off the campaign. And I can't see anything without my readers, so pardon me while I get these on. But anyhow, um, yeah, uh, we're doing great. Now, I do want to mention something real quick. Uh, first of all, good evening, Deadly Dungeon Master, Christopher Sackle, Vaughn Gifford, Grim Lord Gaming, Robert Phillips, Local Gumby, and anyone else out there. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America, and all the ships at sea. Um, so tomorrow night, we are going to have uh, Jack Photon is going to be on the show, and I'm excited about that. Jack creates absolutely beautiful, bespoke tabletop RPG materials. He has done wondrous things. And guys, let me tell you something. If your name got drawn out of the hat for the con last year and you didn't collect on your Jack Photon stuff, um, you're, you you missed out. You missed out. It's going back in the drawing. You're going to want that. Lord Corian, hello. How are you? RPG Grandma, uh, listening while you car wars at home. Well, may all your dices be uh, sixes, I think. Um but anyhow, uh, so yeah, that is happening tomorrow night. And then on Friday night, of course, we would be playing Gamma World. Um, uh, and speaking of Gamma World, I uploaded, uh, in case you didn't see it, and to go by the metrics, not many of you did, the uh, second, first or second, no, it's the second interview uh, I did with James M. Ward over on Facebook. I had to reach way down deep into the sump and pull that up because, uh, you know, you go on Facebook and search for interview with James Ward and you're going to get nothing related to my video. But if I put it up here on my channel, you guys can find it very easily and you're absolutely right daniel rowan jim was an awesome dude um so the fourth one or the final one it's not chronologically the fourth it's chronologically the third uh will be going up tomorrow i will upload that i didn't want to oversaturate uh the the algorithm for me so that's going to happen and uh, so you guys will have uh, almost eight hours of, of listening to Jim talk. Uh, and, uh, you know, I apologize for the audio and video quality. Uh, it was a different time, you see. So one thing I, I, I want to mention, and this is only related to Dungeons and Dragons in the most ancillary of ways, but I just I, I just got to. I just geeked out about this. I, I had a little bit extra, um, <laughs> thanks to you guys. Um, but I had a little bit extra when I was at the mall today, picking up an order. I went into a music store and I bought an album, not a compact disc, 
not a card with a QR code on it. I bought a physical vinyl copy of Led Zeppelin's physical graffiti. And this isn't just some quickie thing. This is a reproduction of the 75 cover. It's got the, the, uh, the holes cut out, the original design and everything. I am just geeking out about this copy of physical graffiti. I said it's only ancillary related to Dungeons and Dragons because, uh, you know, your music of choice for D and D may have been, I, it may have been bluegrass for all you know, right? But for me, it, it's it's Zeppelin, it's Sabbath, it's a little bit of Iron Maiden, some Yes, that sort of thing. Um, and I just, I, I, I just think this is wonderful. I will say. Uh, I, I, I will say, uh, oh, Vaughn, there's going to be four total interviews up on my channel. Um, but anyway, um, the, uh, wh what I paid for this, and this is not a brag, like, yes, I had the funds of it. It was an ouch. The last time I was in a mall and looked at records for what I paid for this, granted, it's a double album. It is, it is a, uh, 280 gram, uh, uh, vinyl, which I guess is important if you're an audiophile. Uh, but, uh, this, this is, uh, uh, $46 after taxes. The last time I was in the mall and looked at records in a serious way, like I want to buy that, not like passing by, you know, a, a, display in the corner of the bookstore or this media shop or something like that and saw vinyl um $46 and I could have come home with half of their studio catalog and had some money left over for a shrink wrap brick of cassettes to make copies for my friends so I'm uh this is not going to be like a display piece you're going to see behind me or anything like that this is actually going to go out on the shelf and when I get a new stylus from my record player I'm going to jam I'm going to group because this is Led Zeppelin's best work right here. I, th I, I think it's all, all in here. Um, and by best, I don't mean that like this is a 10 and then they've got an album that's like a two or a three. No, no, no. This is a 10 and their worst album, uh, which I would say is um, probably in through the outdoor is an eight. So that should tell you, if you, if you don't know, that should tell you how I feel about Led Zeppelin. But enough about that. Things that I also feel strongly are about are the overall awesomeness of uh, the next guy who's going to be up on camera here in just a hot minute. Um, he is the best friend I have that I've never met before. So let me put the headphones on. See, I, I couldn't wear the X-Wing helmet for the... Uh, for the cold open and these it wouldn't have worked um so let's uh let's say hello to my buddy and the dm here on out for wednesdays everybody put your hands together and then take them apart when you realize we can't hear you applaud for the one and only at least as far as science and cryptozoology, the X-Files, the CIA, the NSA, and uh, the Western Australia Highway P Main Patrol Force for Kyle Shuant. Kyle, hey boys and girls, it's time to roll dice and eat some snacks. It is, and I, you know, I, I'm going to have to get an editor for my intros for you. I think they're getting longer, and I have to start ten minutes sooner before I. Uh, uh, before I, I run us out of time, but um, it's not a real game session without a pointless preamble. And exactly, and, and I can I can pointless with the best of them. I see somebody else is lurking back in the, there in the back of the green room too. Yeah, uh, we've got Gumby. We also need uh, Lord Corion. I sent him the link. In you popped the door open, and now just anybody's walking in. Um, <laughs> well, that's all right. We have to actually physically let a kangaroo them in. going by, or you know, uh, as uh, 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 your son or daughter riding on a dingo. I don't know. Um, but anyway, 
So yeah, we're going to do this tonight and we've got an on-screen die roller. So, so you guys are going to see some of the choices we're going to be making. We're going to be using, uh, now I don't want to step on you, Kyle, cause, uh, you are behind the wheel, but we're going to be, uh, filling hexes out of the dungeon master's guide. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we follow a method. Um, so I'll post the, so this will come through, uh, it'll, as if Bill's posting it, but it doesn't matter because I'm going through StreamYard. Correct. Um, all right. So that's a link to the article, the blog article, which talks about how I do it. Um, and uh, yeah, so got, it's got all websites. But basically, you begin with a blank hex map. You choose some starting terrain with a be beginning one. You get a starting village. And then you work out from that central hex to the ones around it, determining their, their terrain and uh, their inhabitation uh, and any predators that are in that terrain. And you build up from there. You, you can read the article and you can mm -hmm. see it in play today. I obviously have done this separately for to generate the coming campaign. Uh, so what we roll up today will not be what the players go through. I don't want them to have any... Uh, any uh, spoilers? I want them to have the happy surprise of stumbling upon 2D100 ogres or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, of course, Vern uh, Vaughn, there is only first edition. You see this? It says official advanced Dungeons and Dragon. You, do you see first edition there? No, because there wasn't any at that time and there shouldn't have been any afterwards. Everything that came after this was a mistake. So, um, yeah, we just uh, work on it. What, what what about additions that released alongside it, though, Kyle? Because, you know, you got Moldvay basic in there. Well, you know, I mean, that they, they, they were basic. You had to introduce kids some way. You know, I was just so 10, 10 or 12 or something like that and, and had, you know, I, I looked at... I looked at this and all these hundreds of pages and, and the Gygaxian prose, and uh, I was a wee bit lost, to be honest. So, uh, you know, had to be an interest, uh, had to be a uh, an intro for the kids. Of course, of course. I mean, I've I've told the story before. My Dungeons and Dragons for like eighteen months was keep on the Borderlands. That was it. That I, I just sussed it out and, you know, I, I didn't, uh, you know, as, as the man said, you know, you merely acquired advanced Dungeons and Dragons. I was born into it. I did not see an advanced book until I was 13. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring on Lord Gum uh, Gumby and Lord Corian because I've never actually heard their voices before. Looks like they don't have cameras today. That's all right. You can you don't have to display your face. But you do need to be able to communicate people. with us in some way. Yes. I so, think there's uh, a between you and I that if they don't have cameras, it should be fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. There, there's, I mean, nobody needs to see my face either, but I've displayed anyway. Just because I'm sadistic, I want you to suffer. So, um, yeah, let's bring them on and they can introduce themselves. Eh? All righty. Uh, now, Lord Corian, I have talked to before. It, he's an awesome guy. This is not a matter of preference, but I do want to talk to Gumby. So, Gumby, come in, Radio Gumby. Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, no, I can't. Oh. Of course, I can. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, good to finally get to talk to you. Welcome to the thank show. You, thank and, you. I figured uh, I'd ease you guys in. I, I'm a little bit of a acquired case, so I don't want to hit you with the visuals, also. Uh, but I, I, and we, we, and the, the, the viewing audience home appreciate it. And, uh, here's, here's a fellow who, uh, has been uh, kicking around this neighborhood for a little while. Uh, everybody say greets to Lord Corian. How are you, my friend? Hail and well met my friends. Hail and Hail well met. Well met. All right. <laughs> so, uh, as the, as they say in times of aviation crisis, Kyle, your aircraft. <laughs> all right so um 
add this thing. All right, so here's the uh, here's the article telling you what to do. You won't, obviously won't be able to read that on screen, but just to remind people to go and look at the hex on up article. Um, so that could be a good guide, even if you're not using Dungeons and Dragons. Um, it just shows uh, what a nice and useful tool the Dungeon Master's Guide is. Now, we'll be using all free online tools. Obviously, uh, you guys can just use pencil and paper. That's what I usually do. However, for an online game, it's good to have online tools. And it's also obviously good when we're wanting to share things with our live streamed audience. Um, so there's a useful little there's a useful little site called HexTML, which is basically making hex maps by way of online. Uh, it doesn't have random generation, so you have to fill them in one by one, and the scale is entirely up to you. So I've got a little thing here. All right. So I've just started off with a blank map and a hilly terrain. And I've called it a village called Stump, just for simplicity. And then you can go edit player's notes. Now, the first thing is the, uh, the text. Oops, I need to zoom out a bit. There we go. The first thing is the text. The text is what displays, in this case, the name of the village. Now, you could write an entire novel if you wanted, but then you, it would be hard to see anything. Then there are the player's notes. So for the um, for those who don't know, uh, this website, <coughs> so there's two ways you can use it. Uh, one is when you use it for free, the Dungeon Master will just be able to use it themselves. Um, if you save it, it will only save locally on your own laptop. In order to be able to save it and uh, have a link that you can share with others, you need to be a, a paid subscriber, which is a few dollars a month or something. Uh, but that, that would be well worth it if you're running a regular online game. Then you can have the player's notes and any of the players can put those notes about that particular hex and uh, edit them accordingly. Secret notes, only the dungeon master gets to um, do these and see these. So the secret notes will be, you know, things like there's these monsters in this unexplored hex. Here's, here's the 2D 100 ogres. Um, so those are the secret notes. Now, we've got this original uh, village. Now, players' notes, this will all be uh, public. So the next thing we do is generate the original village. And we go to the good old Donjon website, which I recommend to every player. Yes, every I will put that link up there for you, Kyle, unless you already uh, got it. Yep, yes. I've already done so. Uh, yeah, every player, every DM of every game, it has many, many useful resources. If you look along the side, you've got name generators, world generators, there's fantasy stuff, there's random campaigns. Treasure, random treasure maps, Avatar Legends, whatever that is, AD&D, D20, Pathfinder, D&D 4E for those reprobates who play that, um, Fifth Edition, Weird oh. Fiction, Science Fiction, Alien RPG. They've got everything. It's a wonderful website. Now, Can I make one uh, quick recommendation, Kyle, uh, yep. also? Um and I can never remember this URL off the top of my head, but something kind of the icing on the cake. Uh, let me find this real quick. This is um, uh, here we are. This is now, even if you're playing in a homebrew world, if you want to gen up some weather, you want to know, are the, is the party getting rained on, snowed on, sandblasted, sun uh, burnt, whatever. This is the uh, World of Greyhawk uh, scroll of weather forecasting. But, and again, you can use it for any terrain. Uh, it does follow the Greyhawk calendar, but you can generate 365 days of weather, save it to your local machine, and apply it to whatever fantasy calendar you come up with. And uh, it will, it is for all sorts of terrain, 
all sorts of climates. You can input which latitude you want that to fall on. So, you know, if you're like, well, I picture this is taking place in medieval Florida, you want to set the, the, the latitude, you know, fairly, uh, uh, I, I guess, uh, they, they go, they go down as you go South Kyle. Uh, is that correct? Or do they go up as you go South anyway? Um, down or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, you know, you, you obviously, you don't want snow in February if you're, if you're gaming in fantasy uh, tortugas or something like that, or maybe you do, I don't know, but check out that website to add weather to your world. Ready. Go. Okay. So in this campaign, what will, what will have happened is that um, count of this area of Pfaffenberg, which is in the North of the country uh, and uh, is mostly wilderness with lots of monsters running around. He wants to, populate and enrich his world so uh he sends you the adventurers up north to uh, go to this village and clear the surrounding area of monsters uh, and that will gradually attract people and so then you'll have more men at arms and more people who can help you out and so on and so forth so it's effectively like you know the the traditional you reach ninth level you build a stronghold and clear the surrounding hexes of monsters. It's like that, except that you're doing it gradually from first level onwards. So, you know, whichever of you last till ninth level gets to be Lord underneath the count. Anyway, so the, here with the, we've gone for the medieval demographics and it comes from a wonderful book called uh, Medieval Demographics Made Easy by S. John Ross, where he uh, looked into the actual demographics of medieval villages and towns and that, you know, like in the movies and the stories, there's always a blacksmith, there's always a village inn, and so on. And interestingly enough, the most common profession isn't blacksmith or innkeeper because you need a certain population of people to sustain each worker. The most single most common thing is a shoemaker, a cobbler. Uh, and that appears in, I think it was like one in 150 uh, people would be a, a shoemaker and you just think like if you've got these people who are out in the fields all day every day their boots are going to wear out pretty quickly uh, on, on the scale of things whereas there's not so much need like uh, if, you, if you've got an ironmonger somebody who makes horseshoes and hinges and stuff that stuff doesn't wear out as quickly so you, you don't need it to go as um, to be replaced as often Anyway, so we've got the county of Pfaffenberg, which I've said as a thousand square miles. I've said it's got low population density. It's not quite desolate, but 240 years. Um, and uh, it says the uh, county of Pfaffenberg covers an area of a thousand square miles. Of this, 25% is arable land and 74% is wilderness. The county of Pfaffenberg has a total population of 40,000 people. The largest town has a population of 3,000 people. That's Dust Capital, by the way. The second largest, 1,800. There are no other towns of note in the kingdom. The remaining population lives in numerous small villages, um, isolated dwellings, etc. cetera. Um, now, the set, and then uh, you go to an individual settlement. In this case, I've just called it Stump, and I've given it a population of 256. And you can see how it's said that how many carpenters and blacksmiths and everything and if you just, if you're not happy with the results, you could just put your cursor in uh, the name or the population, and you just hit return, and each time it'll give you a new random one. Um, like you know, if you're insistent that the place has a barber, okay, now it's got one barber and one baker, one cup, blah blah blah. Or if you're really keen to have a blacksmith, you can just keep re-rolling the dice, so to speak, until you get the result that you want. Um, all right. We'll just stick with this one. All right. So I'm now going to note down what the town has got. It's got a barber, a blacksmith, and a carpenter. Uh, it's also got a furrier, hat maker, illuminator, and jeweler. Feel free to speak up and make smart-ass comments, guys. It's traditionally 
<laughs> I was, oh, good. I was just waiting for permission. <laughs> There's a maid servant. Mason. Mason will be useful if you want to build walls. Uh, Mercer. What's a Mercer? I mean, games. Who in the audience knows what a Mercer is? Somebody pays a uh, uh, um, comment up. I mean, I know that I know the common name, but I, I don't. I'm not familiar with uh, with with that as a as a role, a mercer. Purse maker. I know mercerism was uh, was uh, Philip K. Dick making fun of Scientology in uh, Blade Runner. But uh, do androids dream of electric sheep? It did not show up in Blade Runner, unfortunately. I, I don't know what a mercer is. What, what is it, Kyle? You're gonna have to tell me. Oh, no? I believe it's actually a grocer, like a green a, grocer or a general merchant. Ah, uh, fine. Uh, uh, not, nobody in the stream, no. No, not a clue. Oh, okay. <laughs> A dealer in textile fabrics, especially silks, velvets, and other <laughs> fine materials. Uh, good old Google, eh? Yeah. There you go. I, I knew because I've had uh, I've had three um, uh, clients over the years who had the surname Mercer. There was a Tess and Aaron and a uh, and the Louise. Two of them were related because they were married, and then the third one was completely unrelated. <clears throat> Uh, I know what a farrier is. I was wondering, yeah, if the town had one. No, the town does not have a farrier, unfortunately. All right. Yeah, the town has got a barber, a blacksmith, a carpenter, a furrier, a hat maker, a uh, illuminator. Furrier and farrier are not the same for anyone who's wondering. Uh, wondering furrier is for furs, and a furrier is for... Um, is um, Horseshoes. Yep. That's right. Uh, hat maker, illuminator, jeweler, maid servant, mason, mercer, pastry cook, purse maker, rope maker, saddler, shoemaker, and tailor. And as we like to say, furriers ruin everything. You do? Why? All right. Um... The village has some. Um, the village has one noble houses. The piece is kept by one, and that's Count Pfaffenberg. The piece is kept by one guardsman. There are zero advocates to assist with legal matters. So <laughs> you just have to yourself. For those more concerned about the soul, there are six clergymen and no priests. A, a, a fairly dynamic zero defects allowed law enforcement system. <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing like an 11th level lawful neutral fighter with a two-handed sword who just who just walks around glowering at people. There's one, one, um, one guardsman. So in medieval towns, they would just call them a, um, there was a reeve. And uh, it, it was the, the Shire Reeve from which we get sheriff. Uh, and he just collected the taxes. Um, so, yeah, so I'll just save uh export at this point okay oh did i miss it is there a cooper not huh. you've got no one to make your barrels you don't even have a carpenter oh you, yes there is a carpenter we have That's a carpenter. Place you you make square barrels aka boxes <laughs> yeah now there is no inn or tavern so you're just going to have to uh stay with a farmer or camp in a paddock or something. But I mean, medieval times, uh, travelers often did that. All right, so that is the town generation. Obviously the game master can alter that as they see fit, but uh, that's the town generation. Oh, so basically a that. dry town. <laughs> he, he he does have an assistant uh with a crossbow and uh he makes him carry one quarrel in his uh in his uh, tunic pocket at all times but that's all <laughs> all right so the um uh now we get to the random uh, terrain generation the terrain around the place okay when, uh, we then we go to the dungeon master's guide 
Advanced Dungeons and Dragons first edition. There is no other. There is no edition but first edition, and Gygax is its prophet. Um, and uh, oh, we man. look at it. Hurrah. <laughs> and we look at Appendix B. Right, it's on page 173 of the Dungeon Master's Guide. You got that up? If, okay, I see it there. If yeah. a wilderness expedition moves into an area where no detailed map has been prepared in advance, the random terrain determination system below can be utilized with relative ease for a one space, X, equals one mile or larger scale. In using it, however, common sense must prevail. For example, if the country is the expedition is in the north country, the forest will be pine or possibly scrub while in tropical regions it will be jungle. Similarly, if a pond is indicated in two successive spaces, the two should be treated as one larger body of water. The dungeon master must also feel free to add to the random terrain as he sees fit in order to develop a reasonable configuration. In any event, the DM must draw in rivers, large lakes, seas, oceans, and islands, as these features cannot easily be generated by a random method. As the party enters each space, generate a random number from one to 20, find the type of terrain the party is currently on by reading across the page, then da read down the column until you find the line where the random number generated falls, and then sim and simply move left to determine the terrain that predominates in the new space. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're starting off in hilly text, uh, hilly text, hilly hex, Okay. The village of Stump is in the hills, and we start off with the northernmost hex. So we need to roll a one d twenty to see what the next uh, terrain is. All right, I got dice tray up, Kyle. If you'd like me to uh, yep. to do that. All right, here okay. we go. Sixteen. Sixteen. So that will be mountains. All right. Then we get mountains. All right. All right. So that's mountains. All right. Now we go from the mountains into the uh, into the northeastern hex. All right. That's a D twenty again. D twenty. Here it comes. Another 16. Okay. So that will be more mountains. Extremist content wants to know if there's going to be a tour of the gym someday. <laughs> well, you know, 85 people are extremists. So <laughs> <laughs> if people are really keen, we can do a, a stream one day where we talk about fitness. It's probably necessary for all the gamer geeks out there to talk about it from time to time. We could do that one day if people are keen and interested. I assume that they're not because they're here for gaming content. But, yeah, if people are keen, we can do that one day. Um, okay. From the northeast to the southeast, Hex. All right. Northeast to southeast, and we get... <laughs> More mountains! Oh great! I swear it is the it is a digital vice. You guys can see it yourself. I'm not, I'm not flipping it weird or anything like that. Okay, to the southernmost hex. Oh, Daniel Rowan was in your uh, field. Says he was a strength and conditioning coach. Twenty. Twenty. Okay. This like will be a field. depression, a gorge, rift, valley, or canyon. Okay. Something Which... else of relevance to gamers. Um. All right, that makes sense. All right, which um, yeah, I'll use the broken lands. One. There we go. Okay, from broken lands to oh, what do they call it? De de or a depression from um, okay. If depression is indicated, it must not, uh, if a depression is indicated, the referee must decide as to its nature and extent. Generally, terrain it is in must be the same as the previous space. A depression in a marsh is some form of lake. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's a valley or something like that. Yeah, it'd be a rift. All right. All right. So, we'll call this hills. 
just to um, so that this place isn't going to be completely surrounded by mountains, we'll call this hills, and then we'll go from the southernmost hex to the southwestern. Uh, I got a 13 on that. All right. Um, so that's more hills. Where's my hills? W. Here we go. All right. And from hills into... So we're going for that northwest hex. Hills. More hills. These people are going to have strong quads, all this walking up and down hills. They are. This is going to be completely jacked villagers. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'd be more like the, the old Greek guys than that, you know, on the, on the hilly Greek islands. <clears throat> all right. Um, okay. From the So we're going to generate the 12 hexes around there, and then we're going to start populating everything with monsters. All right. Okay. So from the hills to the north? Nine. Nine. Okay. So that's more hills. Well, Corian says, well, at least the terrain is defensible. Uh, you could have said that yourself. You're in the chat, Corian. Yeah. Oh, 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 speak. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, at least the terrain <laughs> Actually, is defensible. allowed to, to, to talk. <laughs> Um, all right, so we had more hills. On the other hand, they're surrounded by mountains while they're in hills. Have you yeah. seen the movie Outpost? I <laughs> don't believe I have. Where these poor military guys are in Afghanistan and, uh, and you know, they're at the, at the base of these mountains and the Taliban fire rockets and things down on them and do an attack and just about overwhelm them and that. And um, it's a massive battle, and they suffer horrible casualties, but not as much as the Taliban. And uh, then at the end of the movie, there's a it's a true story. At the end of the movie, there's a postscript which says, um, after an extensive review, it was decided to uh, that they would no longer put outposts in indefensible locations. Oh, <laughs> okay. um, so we got a we got a five. <laughs> Uh, Michael, um, for, yes. Uh, well, we're showing how the the process of generating uh, a campaigning area is what we're doing. Um, now, Kyle has already gone through this process to generate the campaign. We're going to be playing on Wednesday nights, but this is all strictly with uh, uh, HexTML, uh, which is a wonderful website for doing this sort of thing, and the Dungeon Master's Guide. So that's that's what we're that's what we're going through here. Uh, all right, so we got a five on that last roll. Kyle. Yeah, so that was forested. Okay. It was forested. So we're now going oh, from trees, finally. Forest, forest into... Come on, beach. <laughs> Ocean, uh, 20. 20, another depression. So oh, it's some more broken lands. No, what do they say? Um, and somebody was asking, I, I wasn't sure who it was. They they were asking uh, about what constitutes broken lands. It's generally, it, I mean, it's going to be an irregular landscape uh, of, of plains, crags, lots of quote unquote new rock formations, uh, typically not very arable. Um, you know, you you might you know, know the movie where the where the dude had the like rock fall in on him, and then in order to get the out, he had to cut his arm off and yeah, <laughs> and go off, yeah, like that. That sort of terrain, yeah, yeah like Monument Park. Uh, it's it, the terrain. It's, it's the terrain that fits the phrase "rocks fall, you die." Yeah, yeah. One hundred and twenty-seven <laughs> hours is the name of that film. Um, <laughs> all right. Next hex, we have That's seventeen. I think we're back from mountains. That's our win condition for the campaign if we make it to 128 hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what'd you get? 17. More mountains. Yeah. So we've generated New Mexico. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right. From, what, from what, the what, mountains what, into the next hill. Endless desert. Yep. The only state that's <laughs> uphill, no matter which way you come in. Yeah. <laughs> 13. 13. Okay, yep, more mountains. <laughs> Florida is downhill regardless of what direction you go. Six. Six. Okay. Um, desert. 
uh, all right, we are creating New Mexico. My God! Uh, but wonderful <laughs> Wizard of Games asked, "Would this process work as easy uh, as is for creating a hex crawl in a medieval Chinese city?" Unquestionably, unquestionably, yes. China is a, a, a uh, just regardless of politics or anything else. China is a beautiful country of of wonderfully varied terrain. Um, yep. Next, next up it is Earth like terrain. snowy mountains. <laughs> People don't really uh, pick it, but like China is one of the largest timber exporters in the world. You know, when you think of China, you don't tend to think of vast tracts of forest, but they have them. Mm -hmm. And you you, you won't too much longer. Um, so that's uh, <laughs> there's uh, another five, Kyle. Okay, because so we're going from uh, desert into oh, so now we get scrub. Mm -hmm. Which, get good scrubs. Next up is. Hang on, we got to. I got to find the uh, symbol for scrub. Okay, we have a twenty next. Hey, uh, I tell you what, Corian Gumby, if you guys, uh, it would be a good test to see if the die roller is working for y'all, and uh, if either one of y'all wants to take up the next uh, D twenty roll, please, please do. Yeah, sure. How uh, are we doing it in stream or in the? Uh, uh, I, I sent you. I sent you guys a link. Open that. Uh, it's in the private chat area. Open that in another tab. And, uh, you know, if it's, if, if you use script blockers and stuff like that, like I tend to for security, just allow it and, uh, then, uh, click the dice, click roll, and it'll show up here in my pane. P A N E, not P A I N. <laughs> just to clarify, I don't get electrocuted or anything like that. Operant conditioning through die rolling. Does that save work? <laughs> no. Ah! <laughs> oh, I couldn't find a symbol for scrub, so I just used the one for grassland. All right. All righty. Now, from scrub to scrub or grassland to what? What's the next one? Uh, uh, that one be, either one of you guys got it up yet? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not seeing that link, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, it's it's back in the private chat tab. Um, all the way at the top, but uh, if you're not seeing it, I will roll it. We don't want to delay. Uh, let's see. It's a 14, Kyle. I, I'm, I'm guessing more mountains. Scrub into rough terrain. Oh, rough. You can expect that. No, there was one. There was one uh, listed. Desert Rocky. We'll just call it Rocky Desert. I don't know. I think we may have actually we may have accidentally invented Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're adventuring in the Hellbland province. <laughs> Alrighty. Next up. So from the uh the rocky land or to, rough land. To yes, 16. To 16. Mountains. <laughs> Hey, we have a working die roller there. Who did hey, that? Hey, I figured that out. <laughs> All right, you got the next hex. Uh, who, who who got that? What was that? That was me. That was Coron. Yeah, what'd you roll? Oh, I was hoping you saw that. I saw, I saw 12. It was a 12. Yeah, I see 12. <laughs> <laughs> More mountains. <laughs> and... You're going to get a lot of mountain creatures when we roll up the, the monsters. All right. And it's again, we've copper. only got two more hexes to do. It's just copper dragons. Koron, take it. Fifteen. 15. Yep, yeah, more mountains. Last one. Last one. Hey, eight. 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 All right, so that's hills. Oh, I was no. starting to wonder if you guys were like using 3D6 instead of D20. It's oh, like no. weighted right in the middle. <laughs> this is, all right, so you've got the village of Stump, which is right in amongst all these mountains and broken land and desert sort of stuff. <laughs> and you, when you look at the terrain, you can see why it hasn't been settled more densely more recently yeah, I was gonna this say, is just the pioneers got to stump and they couldn't go any further so <laughs> well, the town here then <laughs> they're too tired yeah. they didn't want to die on the oregon trail 
you have died of dysentery. <laughs> All right. Um, and this is just the terrain for two miles around. And you can see why uh, you can't see the hexes any further, even though it's only two miles away, because there's bloody great mountains in the way. <laughs> we can't see our own hex. <laughs> they're probably not very high mountains because they're only, you know, occupying a mile here and there. Uh, so we're not talking about Everest or something, but it, it's, uh, you know, still substantial. I'm picturing terrain like parts of Australia because they're, they're a part. Australia is very geologically old. Um, we don't have, you know, any active volcanoes uh, or um, you know, there's no fault lines or anything. Uh, so... A lot of this terrain was formed literally hundreds of millions of years ago and it's worn down. That's why Australia's a bit bleak and not very fertile because it's just, it's old, old, old. So I'm picturing those rounded kind of hills that, that we call mountains in Australia, but, you know, no, not really. Like our, our tallest one is Mount Kosciuszko and it's about 2,200 metres or so, 7,000 feet or something. You can walk up it. Like, you, you don't need climbing equipment. You just need... You know, people have done it with a pair of runners. So, <laughs> and that's that's our biggest mountain. So I'm picturing something a bit like that. But, you know, you, you, that would be discovered during the rest of the campaign. The town of Stuff. Got it. Okay. Easy to navigate, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, you check each space for the possibility of inhabitation. You use random numbers, 0, 1 to 100. Okay. Um. Now, I'll say straight up that I'm going to reject anything that has a result of being a city. I'll just change the, that result to uh, being like castle or ruins or something. Um, All right. So it's uh, D100. So, uh, Gumby, you want to do some rolls? Sure. D100. So this is for the northernmost hex. A little drum roll there, guys. Twenty-four. Okay, so anything above eighteen or above is uninhabited. Or oh, sorry, seventeen or above is uninhabited. Right. So we want one to seventeen. All right, oh, Gumby. Okay. Roll again. Northeast. Nothing. Okay. The southeast. Nothing. The <laughs> south, south. One more. Then. Nothing. Southwest. <laughs> oh, I saw. I thought it was going to come up 05, but it's 25, <laughs> so nothing. The uh, northwest. Nothing. All right. Damn, now we go to the damn mountains. Nope. All right. Now we go to uh, this hex here. I'm going to zoom in. All right. Go to this hex here. Some more rolls. So we need 12 more rolls. Go ahead, Lord, if you want. Yeah. Lord, give it, give, give it got a it, Got it. Let's see. Give me something got good, guys. 33. Nope. That ain't no. good. And again, hey, 15. 15, we have something. Yay. 15, okay. 15 is a castle. Hey, hey. Castle generation. Pants is pants. Fun. <laughs> oh, right. Text. Castle. Uh, and which one of you guys wrote that? Uh, rolled it? That was Koran. Castle Corian. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hello, uh, Mr. Where's the, um, where's the, uh, all right. See, castle tables, Appendix C, like 182 to 3. So now I'm going to go to page 120. All right. Castle size, uh, size, class, and type. D100 roll to see how big it is. This is all you, Lord Coria. So, I hope 71 is big. 71. It's a medium castle, medium walled castle with keep. Okay, okay. We got the keep. That's good. Let's hope it's a borderland. 
<laughs> At this point, it, this is a border. All right. <laughs> Once the size and type of castles discovered has been determined, the inhabitants are found. D100. In that D100. castle. Uh, yeah, D100. Yeah. 82. 82. Character types. Bum, bum, bum. They have conquered a hex. Inhabited by adventurers. Ooh. All right. So. Are these our rivals? Could be. Could be. All right. Shouldn't give character the DM ideas. <laughs> refers, character types refers to the basic and subclasses of characters. Okay, so D100. Yeah, they are indeed lords, lord types. 23rd level bard. If <laughs> you get a zero, zero. All right, D100. <laughs> 69. There really is a bard. Nice. Yeah. It's a magic user of 11th to 14th level. Okay, Good God. So roll a one. Roll 1d4 for uh, the magic user's level. One. One. So okay, limit. so he's 11th level. Only an 11th level magic user, kids. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> That's a hell of a lot of magic missiles. Yes, it is. <laughs> lots of whole persons, lots of magic missiles to amuse himself with. Four magic items possessed by the stronghold's master as well as for discovering the level of his or her henchman. Use the character subtable in the dungeon random monster tables. There will be from two to five henchmen found within a fortress. Certain character types will have special followers, and these will be found there also. However, except for the clerical possession, these followers will not serve as the main castle garrison. The, these those men at arms will be, and then there's nine to twelve heavy horse, uh, nine to sixteen light horse, and so on. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in. That's two to five henchmen. And then copy and paste the other stuff. I'm going to put a little then, note. I'll put a little note to rewrite it because obviously the, the game master can do every hex one by one um, or they can uh, just, you know, do a little bit and then um, come back and fill in the details later. Um. And yeah, uh, oh, look, fortresses will be stocked with food, water, and supplies of arms and missiles. Each will, will have artillery and sufficient crew to operate each engine as follows. So you've got a um, medium castle. There's going to be two ballista scorpions, two light uh, catapults, and five oil cal cauldrons. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, My goal is yeah, to make so, sure the oil cal cauldrons are used this game. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not going to. We're not going to roll up all that right now, but it's sufficient at the moment to know that that's there, um, and we'll see how we we'll think. Hmm, I wonder how it's going to interact with the others around. All right, let's continue. Corian can, I think, can, um, can uh, rest his dice for a moment, and mm -hmm. we can see what Gumby rolls up for the next hex if there's any inhabitants. Give him hell, Gumby. D100. Yeah. Thirty-nine. No, we just want uh, one to seventeen. Tell us about one to seventeen. Yeah. The next. Nothing. The next. Extra nothing. The next. We're empty. I like some These of are these other games. Numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the next. You guys just like throwing dice at my face. All over my face. Nothing. And the next. Oh, so close. <laughs> you guys are determined to give us like empty mountains. <laughs> and the next. Nothing. Kyle, an 11th level magic user and a party of adventurers have moved in. Of course, these X's are empty. How about eight? eight? <laughs> eight. There we no. go. What'd you get? Eight? Yes. Sir. Yes. All right. Uh, all right. So we've got to go back to the uh, page 172, three.
Alrighty, so eight is a village. All right, a little village here. Uh, we'll call this Vaughn's Village since he's always asking questions. <laughs> there we go, Vaughn Village. You're immortalized, Vaughn. <laughs> Alrighty, now the village will have a population of 600 to 900. That's quite a village. So, um, <laughs> the, the village is going to, the, the little village has a greater population than where we're starting. Oh, yep. But maybe they don't like you or something. Who knows? Maybe it's a village of lawful evil people or something. Who knows? Population 600 to 900. Um, so dice it up. I don't know. Uh, D6. 600 to 900 is going to be, um, let's see, that's six to nine, basically. So, gosh, mm. what would that be? Um, D3 or something. I don't know. Uh, D3 times, uh, uh, D6 times 50 well, plus 600 or something like that. I don't know. I got a six uh, if you need a D6. All right. Uh, it, well, there, there we go. 900. Population like nine hundred, like D D three times two, um, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, or D three uh, times three. So we go back to Don John and medieval demographics. Hundred. Oops. Red. The village of Vaughan. Oh, it's got a lot of services. That village of Vaughan. What I'm going to do. The quest is just to get to the main town. <laughs> we got to restock. <laughs> it's got zillions of people. Oh, it copied fairly well. All right. Um, it's got all these people. So One our party house, the piece is kept by two guardsmen, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Our party is not adventuring. We're just, we're just trying to get to the big city. It's like up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, remember, I mean, it's up to the uh, the dungeon master. These guys may not actually be friendly. That, that's very true. That's, Tell me that's a very tale. True. And it doesn't say it's a village. Of, it doesn't say it's a village of humans. Or village of demi humans could be a village of 200 of 900 kobolds. Yikes! <laughs> so, um, yeah, all right, two hexes to go. Two hexes to go. We want a d100 roll to see if there's anything in these. Perfect. All right, do it to it. Put your dishes down. Nope, 96. <laughs> And the last one. Oh. Nothing. Nothing. All right. Now, okay, so we go back to the article, and it tells us, okay, you begin with the blank hex map, blah, 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 starting village. You do the terrain. You check if there's a normal settlement or ruins. Um, but... Predators. We assume there are endless numbers of ants, dogs, deers, and so on in any hex. What we're interested in is the things which might kill, capture, or eat you. The predators. One kind per hex. Normally DMs roll for the party to encountering wandering monsters. But note this is not a roll to see whether monsters exist in the area, but whether the party encounters them. I haven't seen a fireman all week, but the fire station is about 500 yards from my home. I'm pretty sure they didn't all close up and go home. But if a party thoroughly explores a hex, they will find the, those monsters and sign of them. You can't have a flying dragon around without cattle or sheep disappearing or 120 goblins marching about without leaving muddy tracks or manure by the side of the road. So you roll for the appropriate monster and consulting the AD&D monster manual, check the number appearing. Um, then the percentage in lair. With wandering monsters, uh, as the party travels across the wilderness, this is normally the chance that they stumble across their lair. With this method, this is taken as the chance that the monsters have a lair in this hex. They may simply be traveling through, scouting, raiding, looking for food, and so on. And then there's the uh, treasure generator and all the rest. 
Okay. So we now go from the Dungeon Masters, in the Dungeon Masters Guide, we go to that big, long list of all the monsters in the various areas. Okay, so we've got ran Appendix C, Random Monster Encounters. There's subarctic conditions, which you're not in, temperate and subtropical conditions, um, and then there are subtables. Right, so this is a uh, temperate and subtropical uh, conditions, and we say uninhabited wilderness areas. It's effectively a wilderness area. Then predominant terrain. We go through each hex in turn. So the northernmost hex, closest to stump, is a mountain. Okay. All right. And then we roll a D100. So who wants to roll for what's in this hex? I'll throw some be. dice. Oh, yeah. There's right, going to be something be in every hex. Do you think it's a square mile and think like that can sustain a pack of wolves or an ogre or whatever in terms of the, the prey animals? 16. 16 will be a gargoyle. Multiple gargoyles. Yeah, it oh, makes sense. It's, nice. a stony, it's a stony place. Now we uh, roll to see if that's a lair, right? Yeah. So you roll. So, yep, we go to the monster manual. So Find with a gargoyle. Eight and gargoyles, their percent in layer is 20. So that is yep. not... Uh, that is not them, but it's two to 16 gargoyles just hanging out in that hex. Yep. So roll for how many gargoyles? Seven gargoyles. Duh. Seven. It's seven. So seven gargoyles. All right. Now, and then we go treasure type. Individuals have treasure type M. Mm. Okay. <laughs> now, there's a wonderful site that will roll up your treasure for you. By the way, for those of you who are curious, that's um, there's seven of them. That's twenty eight attacks because gargoyles <laughs> do claw, claw, horn, stab, bite all in a round. Twenty eight attacks. This is why you maybe don't try and buy plate mail right out of the gate. You go with chain mail and hire eight guys with spears. <laughs> all right. So the individual treasure. I've just rolled it up. Treasure type M. That's just some gold pieces on each one. Apparently, they've got, you know, I don't know where they keep the gold pieces, but anyway. You you don't want to know, Kyle. It's <laughs> really, I'll get the. All righty. And then the. Um, but they don't have a lair, do they? No. There you go. Yeah, just, right. just wandering around in the, yes. wandering around the wilderness. He's walking around with double handfuls of coins going, God, I really want to kill an adventurer! <laughs> <laughs> I got a coin behind the ear, perhaps. Anyway, so there's the gargoyles wandering around in um, in that hex. Okay, now the northeastern hex. What have we got there? Do it, Gumby. Doom us. Give us a red dragon. <laughs> In the mountains, whatever. Dragon, 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 dragon. It's good terrain for it. Seventy-nine. Seventy-nine is undead. Okay. Brains. The Dracula. And we would go to the undead sub table. Okay. In the mountains, we find what? Roll it up. Roll it again. A lich in its lair would just be hilarious. <laughs> nice. 69. 69. Okay. A vampire. Oh, multiple vampires. Oh. Let's see. Bigger notes. Vampire. I would practically say that vampires would almost have to be in their lair because they're, you yeah. know. <laughs> but their percent lair is only 25. That's weird. Well, they're, they're out and about. I mean, the, their lair could exist somewhere on the map. But, you know, they're out and about, about flying around their hunting bats or area. something. Yeah. You know, there might be a very good reason that, that, um, that you know, that uh, magic users are able to live in that area. 
you know, because you've got to think about so once you roll it all up, you as DM have got to think about the relationships between them all. Like what, you know, you, you'll have to roll up the uh, magic user. What's his alignment? The magic user may not be a good magic user. Yeah, he, he Perhaps might. Perhaps the magic user is evil or neutral and the magic user is feeding people to the vampire. All right. Vampire, number appearing, one to four. Give us a D4 roll, somebody. Uh, let's see. Two. Deuce. So maybe it's a couple or father and son or something. Um, okay. Percent you Jin Lair. 25. 25 is the percent. And 81 or 87. 81. No, they're not in Lair. Which can be, I guess, a good thing, potentially. Okay. Now, in the case of the, the vampire, because it's uh, an intelligent creature, I would also um, I would generate its treasure anyway. Because if its treasure includes magical items, it might be carrying them with it and using it. Using them. All right. So our vampires have uh, their treasure type F. Yes. All right. So they've got 7,000 gold, a potion of water breathing, a spell scroll with illusionist, programmed illusion, phantasmal killer, minor creation suggestion, a map to some monetary treasure, a labyrinth of caves found in lair, 14,000 where, where there is 14,000 lectern pieces in that, um, in that lair. So they have a lair somewhere, but it's far away. So that's a little adventure for the, the PCs to go on. Uh, scroll of protection from electricity, Zagig spell component case. And remember, uh, guys, uh, your vampires can have had profession before they became blood sucking monsters. So that scroll of illusionist spells, you, yes, you could be dealing with an illusionist vampire, absolutely <laughs> ready, willing, and able to, to, to start ripping off a uh, phantasmal killer at your party. All right. So, yeah, to the immediate north, you've got gargoyles, and to the northeast, you've got some vampires. Okay, what's in the southeast of this poor benighted village? All right, well. And that was how we accidentally created uh, Curse of Strahd. Um, <laughs> nothing. Or 85, nothing. 85? No, so awesome. what kind of monster? Giant weasel. Oh, oh, giant weasels. Okay. <laughs> giant weasels. Good, good trade for the yep. fur guy. Weasels. One d eight. One d eight. Giant weasels. Well, they're fast. Move fifteen. Woo. So uh, one, one giant eight. weasel. There's just one. This is quickly oh, turning into red wall. <laughs> one weasel. Fifteen percent chance in lair. Hmm. Is there a lair? Giant weasels ripped my flesh. Riz. Uh, you, you get one internet sure? dollar if you can tell me what that is in reference to. <laughs> uh, that is a 15% chance that they're in lair. Yeah. I got it. Oh, no, you got it. Good yes. Team. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's right on it. We've rolled up Cal. I have a lair. The <laughs> lair itself, but they don't have any treasure. So. But they'll have a lair. But, you know, I mean, uh, creative DM, you can use things. Like I said, you've got the vampire. The vampire has a map to monetary treasure. That may be their distant lair. The vampire may, you, the DM may decide that that map, that treasure map is actually a map to the lair here in the, because it's the adjacent hex. And the giant we weasel guards everything. Well, and also the what's the weasel's special attack? Drain blood. Yeah. So maybe it's the vampire's pet. Yes, indeed. Uh, and, feel uh, an <laughs> oh no. <laughs> BK Adams pointed out giant weasel pelts are big money. Yes, they are worth one thousand to six thousand gold pieces. I have yeah. always deemed that you get the XP from the sale price of that pelt. If you, if you go in against a giant weasel with its drain blood attack and its two to twelve bite, 
You've earned that. <laughs> that is that was a learning experience. So absolutely. Um, so Lear is referred to. Can I do the next hex? Go for it. Roll a baboon. I'll say the lair is referred to as referred to in the vampire's map. And then right. uh, what the weasels say. So I'll just say I'll connect the two things. It's a mile away. That's why, you know, but he's just lurking around in that one. All right, the next one, the broken lands to the south of Stump. We have a 19. 19, all right. The rough terrain. A herd animal. Okay, is there a herd animal subtable? I don't know. Oh, uh, there animal. is. Uh, actually, no, I don't. Uh, now that I'm thinking on it, I was uh, herd animals are just kind of generic. They're antelope or whatever. Um yeah, herd animal, uh, 20 to 200, so 2d10. All right, what's in this? What's in this or I'll make it goats. Okay. Giant chickens. Uh, there are uh, 80 of them, Kyle. There are 80 goats. There we go. <laughs> Being preyed upon by the weasel, probably. Exactly. It's, nope. a, it's an ecosystem. <laughs> No doubt. This is fat weasel in the next X. <laughs> Surrounded by the drained corpses of goats. All right. Um, they, so they won't have any treasure, obviously. All righty. The giant weasel is the chupacabra, the goat sucker. Yes. <laughs> the next hex is hills. What's in these hills? What's in the the hills, hills are alive with a sound of 20. Already a uh, demi human, demi human okay. subtable. What kind of demi humans are we dealing with? Dwarves, elves, gnomes, or halflings? One, one, wow, dwarf. And that answers the wonderful wizards of games. Why would the villagers of Stump ever consider living in this absolutely hostile to the very concept <laughs> of life <laughs> in Sylvania? Because there's dwarves nearby, dwarves are 40 to 400. Uh, appearing, I think, if somebody wants to correct 40 to 400. <laughs> All right, so uh, roll a d10 and multiply it by four. Uh, uh, yeah, no, wh what do we want? 4d10 times four times 10. All right, one, two, oh, three, four. Oh, oh you sorry, I thought that was me. No, that's okay. Uh, so there's 200 of them. <laughs> And dwarves are lawful good, so uh, yeah, the village of Stump has allies they can call on. As long as the village of Stump is lawful good. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> All righty. Um, the, um, are they at home? <laughs> yeah, is there a lair? 50% uh, chance. Well, let's hope for the, 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 the sake of the... Uh, Oh, 29. No. It is their lair. Oh. Nice. Lair. Okay. Now, we won't worry about the individual treasures. I'm not going <laughs> to roll up 200 um, of their, like, 1d10 gold or whatever it is. Uh, well, that this... just breaks my verisimilitude, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, but individuals me. have, oh, and, but uh, the lair itself has type G. Let's go. So type G. Q no times exact, And then Q times 20. Two times 20. Lots and lots of gems. Oh. Basically. Thank you for the super, Binger. Uh, is my paladin the dwarf clan leader? Of course he's not. And I, I, I don't know if I'm going to get a paladin, but um, no, I am not the dwarf clan leader. Um, and uh, then there's one remaining that's uh, treasure type R. Be Lord Master Blaster. Oh, it wasn't. So, oh, I accidentally did 20. So, there's 4,000 gold and uh, lots of jewelry. Total value 21,200. Yeah, but you have to like knock over 200 dwarves to get it. <laughs> or be sneaky. Um, so they'll have lots of treasure. 
they are after all dwarves. For every 40 dwarves in a group, there will be a fighter of second through uh, sixth level. Okay, so you got 200, so, um, and there's four, so five, so we'll just go fighter, second, third, fourth, fourth fifth, for simplicity, um, six, because it's second, uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, second through six level? Yeah. So, yeah, just one of each level. If 160 or more dwarves are in a group, yes, there will be in addition one sixth and one fourth level fighter as a chief and lieutenant of the group. So, six times two, and fourth times two. Uh, if 200 or more are encountered, there will be a fighter cleric of third to sixth level fighting ability and fourth to seventh level clerical ability in addition to the others. Okay. Um, so we, we'll just make him in the, in the middle, fourth level for both. So fourth level fighter cleric. This is the place the the people of Stump run to when the uh, when the when the <laughs> vampires come calling or the the gargoyles get up and eat. <laughs> if three hundred and twenty or more dwarves are encountered, no. Okay, no. And this is what they're in They're uh, they've got and higher level fighter or clerics have a ten percent chance per level of having magic armor or weapons. Likely to have tamed animals to serve as guards in their lair. Oh, 60 percent. See if they've got um. Guards, sixty percent likely. They got Let's see. Uh, sixty. Yes, on the <laughs> nose. Okay, so twenty-five percent of the time it's wolves, and seventy-five percent it's brown bears. Uh, brown bears. 70. Two to eight. So okay. Yep. So two to eight brown bears. Two d four. Oh, 2d4, not 2d8. Yeah, 2d4. Yes. 2 to 8. Got it. 8. 8. <laughs> the dwarves are not screwing around. They're not. That's why that weasel stays way <clears throat> up in its hex. Yeah, and of course, um, you might say, what about the guy, the uh, Castle Corion and, and the magic user there? Like, when you roll up his alignment... If it turns out to be evil, then the, the PCs have got some work to do in like balancing up. Oh, yeah. you know, do they want them to just go and do a mission and wipe have one wipe the other out? Or do they want to play them off each other for their own personal advantage? Plus, their mission is to clear the surrounding area. That means the count has unquestioned rule. So those groups have to either submit or be destroyed. How the piece is going to manage that, eh? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> not at first level, but <laughs> no, um, no, not, not at first level, no. <laughs> okay, so the next group of um, the the uh, next hill group of hills. What have we got there? Uh, I got that one. Let me see here. We got a fourteen. Fourteen. That's and more demi humans. All right, uh, what have we got? We have 91. Gnomes. Oh, no, it's hills. Yeah, hills, so halflings. All right. Oh, so much better. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's on prejudice against gnomes. All right, so Not as much as I am against kinder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is... 30 to 300. So we got one, two, three times 10. 90 halflings. They are in their lair. They have uh, treasure type B. All right, let's have a look at treasure type B. I got a bunch of gold and jewelry. And uh, dig this, Kyle. Every halfling 
has one to four dogs treat as wild dogs uh, uh, in in their homes. So every <laughs> half is a dog owner and you could do this per home if you wanted to fully detail out the village or shall we just do one roll and that's how many each one has. <laughs> For every 30 halflings in town, there'll be two second level fighters. All right. So there's a dog for every halfling for every 30. So there's 90. So there's three second level fighters here. Three second level fighters. If more than 90 are encountered, oh, not quite. More than 150, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Halflings count like from one to four dogs per, <laughs> per halfling. <laughs> oh dear um yeah we'll just go on the average statistics so that we don't have to do 90 uh d4 90 d4 uh so what's that 90 times two and a half so 180 225 <laughs> 90 halflings 225 do 225 wild dogs come get some <laughs> <laughs> and they're lawful good as well. So you need to, to have an alliance of the dwarves and the halflings to go after that. Oh, unquestionably. The, 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 the vampire. This is why the vampire is not in his lair. Because yeah. <laughs> if he goes back to his lair, <laughs> the ambush by like 500 yeah, he, is, he is afraid. He is terrified. Um, <laughs> yeah, these guys get plus, throw, plus three with bow or sling. They save at four levels higher. The magic user doesn't come down here and screw with these guys. <laughs> uh, but of course, remember, guys, just because you're the same alignment doesn't mean you're bosom buddies. No, I understand that. I understand that. Yeah. So I'm just um, it's the opposite. It may, it, it, well, the point is the point from a dungeon master's point of view, they're um they can still set up rivalries even if they're the same uh, alignment. Um all right. <laughs> so there's uh, another 12 hexes around, but I think you guys get the idea. Yes. That e even with um, even with a relatively small space, and I mean, they could be one mile hexes, five mile hexes, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But even in a relatively small space, there can be in a lot of adventure. And when you roll things up, you come up with things that you as a, a dungeon master would never put in deliberately. I would never put all that in deliberately. I'd go, oh, that's too crowded. <laughs> right. Um, uh, or, um, yeah, that, that's too much for the PCs to handle. They're just not going to be able to handle it. Uh, but on the other hand, there might be a bunch of really easy creatures that have stupendous amounts of treasure. Uh, in previous episodes where we've uh, done scrolls remember there was that bunch of wasps and they had like twenty thousand in gold and jewelry or something oh yeah yeah i remember the wasps well i i was just, I, you know it, it's it's fun to think what if but then you got to remember if you read up on the wasp in the uh in, in the monster manual you guys have seen aliens right because that's what's going to happen to you in in AD and D. Where he didn't go straight into the body horror, but read the description. It's there. <laughs> so you got to decide: is twenty one thousand gold pieces worth of treasure worth a chest burster? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the with blast of oil are for, you know. Right. Yeah, you burn their wings off, and at that point, it's just like get get the pole arms, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, now. Character generation. You guys won't be held to the, the characters that we come up with. Oh, also, I want to point out a site called uh, Dungeon Scrawl. So I think Dungeon Crawl, but the word scrawl instead. And uh, uh, you can create dungeons with this, basically. You can do this. See what I'm doing here? Like this. So you can, you can obviously use the run, random dungeon generation method. Uh, also in the Dungeon Master's Guide. And you can, um, yeah, uh, do these things. You can put in, um, you can have a separate text file uh, with notes because you can put in room numbers and all that sort of stuff. But that draws up the dungeon. And there's different layers, di different ways you can draw it. You can do the traditional blue one. You can do the hatches you, uh, or whatever. There's all these different sorts of things. So I'll just, I'll uh, post up that link for you guys. 
account. That's a very good one as well. It's like I said, it's not random generation, but it's nonetheless very useful. Yep. All right. Dragon's Foot has a uh, character roller. Okay, it doesn't really it doesn't do equipment and all the rest, but it does the basic character generation for you. If you look at that link, um, so as an example, we go roll three dice, and he gets the guy gets strength ten, intelligence eight, wisdom eight, dex ten, constitution eleven, charisma fourteen. Okay, uh, I think um, it's a boy, and I think it's going to be human uh, fighter because he can't be much else. <laughs> he's 18 years old, he's six foot tall, 153 pounds, um, and uh, oh, he rolled up nine hit points. That's pretty good. And he started with 100 gold. Okay, so you then go through and buy your equipment and all the rest. So you can uh, play with that. Just keep re you can keep re-rolling, but it's three d six, so it's not going to be an awesome awesome one. There's best three of four dice as a method, best three of six dice as a method, best three of four dice plus five bonus points. We are doing three d six in order. That's the method we're using. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> the old ways. <laughs> All right, guys. So. Um, do you want to use uh, that uh, that um, share screen, or do you just roll your dice or whatever? Bill, you go first. Uh, I actually hit the dragon's foot, and I hit the damn jackpot. Um, <laughs> I, I just I just did the three dice and was was blessed. Um, so, do you want me to share it up on screen, or just tell you, or sure. what? Sure, share okay. up on screen for. All righty. Let's see here. Uh, present, share screen, share screen, window. And yeah, I, I got blessed by the dice god. Strength 15, intelligence 16, wisdom 16, dex 12, con 8, charisma 13. Oh, I think we might want to check your dice bill. Ah, I am. I am I am offended, sir. I am offended. <laughs> I, 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 it was the the buttons pushed, man. It was. I'll re-roll it if you want me to. Like, like if you think I'm sus, I'll re-roll it. <laughs> no, that's fine. All right. <laughs> so, All right. you want me to use the character generator? Or are we doing the the dragon's foot three uh, d six? Because I'm prepared three d six straight down. Three to six straight down. Let's see the dice rolls on the screen for the for the fun of it. I already regret this. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you get? Oh, five. Oh, okay. for five. Strength. strength five. So right. you may get some non-viable characters because um, not everyone knows, but yeah, you get things on the tables like um, strength five. Here or lower, the character can only be a magic user. But you'll also need intelligence nine for that. Because you have like strength five and then. Yeah, so intelligence seven. Yeah, so uh, let's. So you're not capable of being a character. You're not capable of being a character. This one's stillborn. It's like he doesn't survive infancy. That was too weak and stupid. All right. 11's better. 11 strength. Okay, um, I hope you're taking a note of this. Yeah, on I got paper covered. or in a text file or something. Nine int. I am certainly fifteen. <laughs> Seven. Seven. <laughs> uh, his name's Lucky already. <laughs> Fifteen. Well, I can... Uh, I'm smart enough to talk my... 
my way out of something, I guess, but <laughs> not much else. <laughs> So what have you got? You've got. Uh, I got an eleven. Got strength. Nine. Oh yeah, I'll post yeah. it uh, in the main. So I strength and intelligence both qualify you for fighter or magic user. I'm just going. I, I mean, you know, what order for the stats? I'm just going the order that they're presented in the player's handbook, which is strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, uh, constitution, charisma. So yeah, uh, I posted it in chat, but strength eleven, dex nine, mm -hmm. wisdom fifteen, or okay, nine, so, um, yeah. I'm not yeah, a, so it could be um, could be a uh, uh, fighter, magic user, or cleric. You know what? We're going to probably need a cleric, so I'm going to pick cleric then. <laughs> Uh, I will say I'm running a fighter magic user thief. <laughs> Damn. He's going to level up so slowly. Uh, that's true, but I did start out with eight hit points. So, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, I am uh, I, I'm using the best book for character name generation ever created right here. This is uh, Pop Lollies and Belly Bones, and I know it's the best book for character name creation ever because this is the book that Gary used. If you go through this book and go through the classic Greyhawk modules, you'll find lots of fun names like Gleepwarp the Eye Biter and Funk and Haughty Peak and all those others. They came from this book. It's it's still available on Amazon. This is by Susan Kells Sperling. Uh, and I do recommend picking up a copy. Uh, so let me see what I want my character. Let's see. All right. Um, oh, this is a great thief name. Um, Teenful Nab Cheat is my character's name. I'm going to put that in the chat. <laughs> Teenful wow. Nab Cheat. Uh, and uh, let's see. Oh, I, I, I lost it. Basically, uh, Nab Cheat is someone who, uh, who will grab things when no one is looking. And uh, Teenful is someone who is irritating or a complainer. <laughs> teenful nab cheat. Well, remember, you don't really need a name until you survive your first combat. I'm I'm taking a name, Kyle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I did have a play once who said, we don't want to know your name until you survive your first combat. <laughs> Make it back and then we'll figure it. it out. It's like yeah. naming your pigs. You know, you can't slaughter them then. Names are for <laughs> that's, closers. <laughs> that's one one of the one of the fun bits. Fun bits of lore about 40k is um, uh, there. I can't remember the planet, but uh, basically the Imperium will allow you allow your remains to to stay in the military graveyard on the planet until you have no heirs left. To tend your grave, and then people have, and then people have officially forgotten you. As long as somebody will come and maintain the headstone and so on, you know, <laughs> it, it's it's left sacrosanct. But when that's done, they just dig it up, churn up your bones and your coffin and whatever else in, <laughs> scoop it out, dump another body in, dump that on top of it. Well, so that's, you're um, that's better than the historical one after the Crimean War. Uh, there was a British company that came and it cleared up all the British war dead that had been buried in mass graves and it ground them up for blood and bone fertilizer and sold them in Britain. Oh. <laughs> there, wasn't the, the, there wasn't the sentimentality that we have today. <laughs> Yikes. It wasn't like the tomb of the unknown soldier. It's like, where was the tune of the unknown soldier? I don't know. Maybe underneath those turnips. That's, yeah. <laughs> All right. So for starting magic user spells, Kyle, should I? Um, oh, yes. See. We've got to roll that, them that up. Is the, 
uh, three. Uh, I I have read magic, and then I have three d10. Um, on e well, one d10 on each column. Okay, what page is that? I just wanted uh, to uh, acquisition that. of magic user spells. Let's see. Uh, I think that is character spells. And we are looking on page 20. Is that 29? Is that, uh, no, that's 39, page 39. So I get one offensive, one defensive, and a miscellaneous. And if that miscellaneous isn't right, well, <laughs> I, I've, I've got some study in. Right. Wait, one, I'll just uh, share that with the group. crew. All right, this is what we've got. So everyone gets read magic, and then you get one offensive, one defensive, and one miscellaneous. That is correct. And let's see here. Uh, now you may choose, or you may roll, or I may roll. It's it's roll, empty. roll, 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 roll your spells. Okay, here we go. Where I roll, I get blamed for the result. <laughs> That's uh, the let's see. Why you have the players roll? <laughs> so first one. Offensive spell, charm person. Not bad. It's a good one. Uh, defensive spell. I'm uh, looking at an eight, and that is spider climb. Also not bad. I can get the hell out of the way. And my miscellaneous spell is... Comprehend languages. They said they're going to eat us. Ah, uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and so, All right, my... Corian, what, what character? Oh, you're starting gear. Your gear, yeah. Um, well, we we can we can do the basics of their characters. I was just going to point out with a wisdom of sixteen. I actually start out with three. I think it's three. Uh, first level cleric spells, but of course I don't roll those. I, just my God gives. I thought them you were a fighter magic user thief. I am a fighter magic user thief. Ignore what I just said. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, I had been looking at uh, at fighter uh, fighter magic user cleric earlier. So yes. Sorry, I tried to grab my player's handbook. Did I hear my name? Yes. yes. Yeah. What was the question? What character class are you going to be? Oh, cleric. Cleric. Okay. Oh, thank gods. Human cleric. <laughs> all right. So cleric just gets uh, the access to all the spells. That's easy. Okay. Gumby, roll them bones. I did the uh, the template. Oh, yeah. What did you get? I ended up with uh, eight for strength, intelligence 13, wisdom yeah, potential eight. Potential magic user, not fighter or cleric. Uh, dexterity 12. Potential thief. So you could be a cleric or a thief. Uh, Constitution 6. And Charisma 10. Hmm. And I went with Mage Thief. I don't think we're oh, lawful yeah. good, guys. <laughs> Yep, fair enough. Elf is a race and lawful neutral. Okay. Um, Bill, are you a human or? I'm a half elf. A half elf. Okay. So, elves. Elves get a plus one to their dexterity, remember? And they get a minus one from their constitution. Yeah. I have that beefy constitution of six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, Corian, did you roll your hit point? Uh, yeah, I got four. Four. Okay. Now, with a beefy constitution of six... I ended up with four. Four, yeah, because you get minus one. Right. Hit points there. It's a straight magic user. I kept getting ones, so that wasn't <laughs> going to work. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. The multi class team. 
Okay. Um, starting loot. Starting loot and gear. So you got to roll for. Uh, let, let me see. Um, want um, the player's handbook to display. Alrighty. So the um Bill's character, the fighter, magic user, thief. Yes. What how do you how do you do um starting money? You just average it out, I suppose. I think it it must average it out. It generated sixty-eight gold for me. Uh, like I think it was sixty-eight or was it eighty-six? No, it was yeah. eighty-three. I'm doing I'm doing better than I thought. So it was uh, 83, eighty-three gold. Okay. What kind of um, armor are you going to wear? Ring mail. Ring mail, yeah. Uh, and I'm going with a uh, short bow and arrows and a short sword. Okay, cool. Now, there'll be other stuff that you can acquire once you're in the town. Right. <clears throat> um, like normal adventuring gear, lanterns and all that sort of stuff. Okay, Corian, what sort of gear are you going for? Well, what's your um? What have you rolled up for your loot? So, um, cleric gets three d six times ten, so thirty two uh, hundred and eighty gold. Oh, perfect. Uh, what was that? Uh... So three d six times ten. Hundred thirty. 130. Okay, so note note that down. What kind of armor will, will you get yourself? I think I can. I can't find my player's handbook. I think I can only. That's all right. Can you see the screen? Uh oh yeah. Let's. Uh... <laughs> I can wear chain right as a cleric. Yep. Yeah, yes, you can wear any armor you want as a cleric. We're gonna need me in the front line. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that chain. Okay, so that's 75 gold. And then the weapons. So I've got a couple of house rules about weapons and armor, okay? So what mm -hmm. I say is that anyone can wear any armor they want. It's just that a thief can't use their thiefly skills while they're wearing metal armor, right? You can't, you can't hide in shadows. You can't climb walls and stuff if you're wearing plate mail. Um, it's also not very smart for a thief to go in the front rank, but that's up to them. Likewise, a magic user can wear full-on armor if they want, but they can't cast their spells while they're doing so. Uh, and that, and given the encumbrance and that they're not likely to have great strength, they're going to be slowed down. So if you want to, as a magic user with one to four hit points, go around in plate mail that you've somehow managed to afford, <laughs> and end up in the front rank and be running along at like six inches while everyone else is doing nine to 12. And you'll be at the, like when the party's running away from a combat and you're at the back of the line with your wonderful <laughs> points, you can do that. That's fine by me. And unable to cast spells, go for it. You know? As well, you can use whatever weapon you want. I don't mind. But the... Um, you can you can only get proficiencies that where it says you can only use weapon x i say you can only get proficiencies in those weapons so a magic user can use a great sword if they want to but the weapon proficiencies it's non proficiency minus, penalty, four. minus five. Oh, minus five that, wow for a magic user so the magic user the first level magic user you know <laughs> just to hit a guy with ac 10 you're going to need to get like a 15 or something just to hit a guy with no armor. But you could do that if you really want to. Uh, clerics are a little bit different. Um, you might get in trouble from your god. I also say if you're struck with, if you're reduced to zero hit points with a sharp weapon or flame or something like that, you continue bleeding out until you reach minus the negative of your constitution, at which point you die. If you are reduced to zero hit points with a blunt weapon, 
you do not continue bleeding out. I mean, people can keep hitting you until you, you die, but you don't continue bleeding out. My reasoning is that the clerics using blunt weapon is that the good clerics want to keep people alive so that they can convert them or have them repent and then later execute them just to make sure that they don't backslide. But uh, the evil clerics want to keep them alive so that they can either enslave them or sacrifice them to their evil god later. So that's why both um, good and evil clerics use blunt weapons. I want to hit them with a mace because they're worth St. Cuthbert. <laughs> that's fine all right but yeah anyway so that's um those are your weapons so uh maces footman's mace is eight gold yeah it looks like i'll take a mace and a heavy crossbow and some bolts and uh i'll leave some uh, remember the cleric you, you you can't get um the cleric can't use a crossbow oh no so you'll have a yeah, you could just you could throw clubs and things, but yeah. you can throw clubs. You can have a sling stone, whatever. I mean, like as I said, you can physically use it. Yeah, you yeah, we'll just use the slings then. You might displease your, of minus three, and you might displease your god. And uh, Mr. Dungeon Master, I yeah. did uh, adjust a couple of things. Um, remembering, I need to thief. Uh, I went from ring mail to leather. Uh, I got mm -hmm. rid of the bow, um, also because I needed money for thieves tools. So, um, <laughs> the price actually came out to the same. I haven't bought any, um, any dry goods yet, but, uh, I did also pick up a spear. So I'm a uh, leather armor, short sword and scabbard. Uh, I've got a backpack, mm -hmm. couple of flasks of oil, uh, the poor man's fireball spell. Um, tender box <laughs> with flint and steel, thieves' tools, and a spear. Okay. Okay. For poking. All right. So, um, who haven't we sorted out? Gumby? Um, I ended up with the whole, what was it? 45 100. gold pieces. 55 gold. Okay. And what are you going to get for yourself? Um, I think the only thing I could wear is padded without any penalties, correct? For being a wizard? Yeah. Well, yeah, you or technically you can't wear any armor. So, you, but so you, you, can, right? you can wear armor, but then can't cast spells. So, so but, yeah, so it's up to you whether you buy armor and use it. Um, remember, you can also, uh, and this applies to the whole party, you can set aside some cash for if you wish to hire men at arms, there may be some available, but you would have to arm and, and armor them. You'd have to equip them as well. Fortunately, that doesn't cost very much because you think, like, if you uh, give you a man at arms, leather, that's five gold, um, and then uh, small shield for 10 gold, that's 15. And uh, then give them a spear. That's one gold. That's sixteen. You know, leather and spear is um, leather and spear is six gold. And then you added a, a, a um, or even just a small wooden shield. That's another one gold. So seven gold, and you can fully equip the man at arms. Um, so it could be worth setting aside some cash for that because they can be your front rank, right? <laughs> as long as you're nice to them. Yeah, <laughs> always good to have a meat shield. <laughs> no, no, yeah. we don't call them what meat shields anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of shield do you have? I have a two to seven hit point man at arms. <laughs> uh, I, I, we have a bla we have a blade of armor that has a built in reactive component. <laughs> 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 Those eight guys over there with wooden rond dashes, padded armor, and spears. Yeah. Now the um, magic user gets to use from memory a staff. Dark or um, dagger, dagger. yeah, dagger, dart. staff dart, dagger, or club. I think, but I know it's definitely staff dart or dagger. I would go yeah, with dagger, dart, staff. That's it, yeah. 
and I don't know how many weapons proficiencies I would get, so I would just take one. You get one. So then four, <laughs> I would take dart to keep me in the background. Yeah, dart's a good one because you can chuck three of them around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they only do 1d3 damage, but, you know. Blink, 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 blink. Now, when you say in the back row, you mean in the back row in front of me? Cause yeah. <laughs> You're extra squishy. <laughs> Yeah, and so that's basically it. So that that kind of um, should uh, give you guys an idea of what the generation method looks like, rolling things up. Again, this isn't what we'll be going with, so you can breathe a sigh of relief about that, I think. Um, <laughs> you wander to the Northwest. You're sucked dry by vampires. Roll up new characters, guys. <laughs> I stubbed my toe and I'm dead. Yeah. Now, three to six down the line, and it's just like I've said uh, about classic traveler. You may not be happy with your character and with what you rolled up. That's fine. You just go ahead and you play them. And uh, if you're really unhappy with them, you play them as insanely bold and brave. And you'll soon be rolling up a new character. See how fast. Or maybe not. Maybe they'll do better than you thought. Um, Bill has heard this story a million times, but. But um, I had a player once. It was a one-off session. But I had this player, Colin, great guy, and he um, rolled up Cag the Fighter, and he had nine strength and one hit point. <laughs> and Cole said, well, Cag thinks he's invincible. I was like, how does that work? He has one hit point. He said, well, if Cag had ever been hit, he would be dead. Therefore, <laughs> Cag has never been yep. hit yet. So Cag thinks he's invincible. Therefore, Cag went in the front rank every time and didn't bother looking for traps. <laughs> he just went ahead of the party and, and <laughs> charged into combat and all the rest. Cag made it all the way to the dungeon. He made every saving throw. He got missed by every attack. And he made it to the end of the dungeon. And uh, there was a salamander in a pool with all the treasure in the pool. And he jumped on the back of the salamander and stabbed it repeatedly in the head and killed it. Um, and then got his share of gold, which was something like 1,500 gold or whatever. And I said, okay, now you guys can level up. And he said, no, CAG goes home and retires. Don't you want to like roll for the next level? And he goes, no, I might just get like two hit points or something. And no, I'm not going <laughs> 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 to. Not only Kag was CAG he, he was smart. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Quit yeah. while you're ahead. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was a one-off game anyway. So the point is, like, if your character is genuinely terrible, they'll die and you can roll another one pretty soon. Um, uh, but, you know, maybe they'll turn out not so terrible after all. So they'll get lucky. They'll be better than you thought they were. So that's why the dice are always right, guys. You come up with more interesting stuff that way, both as a GM in uh, rolling up your game world. As I said, there's no way in hell I would have deliberately set up a place like that. Um, and uh, the players come up with more interesting characters than they might otherwise. And that's all I have to say about that. It looks vaguely oh, familiar right. to the Ultima 3 map. <laughs> it does. It does look. It does look pretty Ultima esque. <laughs> so, Kyle, you are actually uh, you're uh, out the next couple of weeks after this, correct? Yeah, I might be in um, next week. Let me just okay. check the calendar. I might be check, in next week. Um, check the calendar. So I'm pretty sure it's. Uh, next week there. Hey, yeah, Kevin Lane, thank holidays you. Start. School holidays start on the Friday. So usually the um, day before the school holidays, the school finishes at like one o'clock or something like that. So um, I'm unlikely to be available next week. Um, if I am available, it'll just be to bladder on randomly rather than actually game. No, um, I, I completely understand. So, so and, uh, and it'd be two weeks out or a couple of weeks out and then um school holidays finish on the 14th so yeah i'll be back on the wednesday the 17th of april 
And so oh, hopefully uh, Gumby and Corian won't, won't have lost interest by then. And uh, <laughs> we've got somebody else who's interested too. We'll have, yeah, hopefully we'll have our fourth. So, uh, yeah, so we'll reconvene here in a couple of weeks, guys. And don't worry, we'll find fun stuff to do between now and then. Um, and when we do reconvene, we will have Kyle's gentle yet firm hand guiding us through a hex crawl. Um, I will be back tomorrow night. Uh, Jack Photon's going to be here, guys. You don't want to miss that. Jack is a is a creative madman, and I, I absolutely uh, thoroughly enjoyed the guy's work. I want to say let's give him the trailer just to pump up enthusiasm to get yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's so we can it. get a full player. Let's do that. Make it full screen, Kyle. Make it full screen. Show us all. That was I, tried to do a, I tried to do a version of that trailer with a voiceover sounding like Marco at the beginning of Conan the Barbarian. Uh, but when I listened back, I sounded more like Winston Churchill. You know, and it's like, <laughs> between the times when the oceans drank Atlantis, you know, <laughs> we shall fight them in the dungeons. We shall fight them in the hexes. This <laughs> will be our finest six turns. Uh, all right. So, we will uh, never surrender. <laughs> <laughs> Never has so much been owed to so many dead men at arms <laughs> by so few player characters. <laughs> all right. So uh again, thank you all, everyone. And uh we uh, like I said, I'll be back tomorrow night. Jack Photon will be here. It'll be awesome. Friday night, we're gonna play some Gamble World. And um then Saturday, I will be doing the Nerd Council of Doom with of course the dungeon minister and yang and zhao and that's going to be right here on this channel this time we kind of go round robin we, we share the love so um thank you gumby thank you lord corion um i really appreciate it from everyone i'm fixing to get out of here uh and i hope everyone has a lovely evening but until then guys please do keep your eyes open because Regardless of what hex you are in, you may have an encounter with an owl bear. Peace. Have you seen my owl bear? Here's to all the weirdos everywhere in the woods and in the air. Have you seen my owl bear? Should I shave off all my hair? Bobbed her all around, some live in tunnels underground. Some are fat, some are rich, some are sleeping in a ditch. Can you ride a crooked horse without a saddle way out horse? Naked as a toad, all the way to Smoky Joe's. Have you seen the little creep? Driving fast in his little green deep. He smells like fish and brandy, but his rotten teeth look dandy. Take me to the show, I don't care if fast or slow. From action flicks to dancing dicks, just take me to the show.